So hello there everyone. Sorry that it took so long to get this video together. I had strep throat, took a new job, kind of went a little insane with the amount of work and time I was scheduling off. So I'm just getting around to do this. I know it was a free course, so I apologize that you guys had to wait this long for the information, but we're getting to it so you guys can go on. So in today's video, we're going to cover the library search feature of Tactical Arbitrage. So you guys know that we've gone through product search, which is kind of your basic typical online arbitrage searches the view data tab we've gone through that we know that that's where you see your information the products that you searched for we have the Amazon flip section I mean we went in depth in this in the last video you can find a link for that below or on the on our website fbamaster.com reverse search we're actually gonna do a, another video on that instead of talking with Alex as uh, we've had a lot of questions with this so I'll be covering that a little bit later and uh, the library search is where we'll be, we will be focusing today. So, what is the library search? It's pretty easy. So, product search was kind of on, all online arbitrage. So, store other stores that sell products, it would be the, the art of finding those and reselling them. The Amazon Flips was finding products on Amazon to flip and resell back on Amazon. The library search is all about books. Everything you can find about a book, which is awesome because if you guys don't know, there's this guy named Peter Valley, and he talks about Zen arbitrage and the art of finding books that merchant fulfilled, or fulfilled sellers are selling, buying those books, and then selling them using the power of FBA and being able to demand a higher price. So essentially the whole idea is people will pay for FBA, pay for prime shipping. They'll pay for the convenience factor. So if you're able to find the books that have low merchant fulfilled sellers, those penny book sellers who have massive amounts of books and they're looking for volume, and you're able to buy those books, collect them and send them back into Amazon, you can actually charge a premium, especially around like textbook season and or other times of the year that people need these books. And they will actually pay more and then you have helped out the seller who's selling it low you have helped out those who wanted the book in the first place with the convenience of prime and you made money in the middle of it that's the whole idea of this zen arbitrage everyone's happy and nobody has an issue with it so the library search feature that we're looking at here helps us do that kind of arbitrage so you're going to hear me use the word textbooks a lot this is very heavily in textbooks it can be used for all books there's a bunch of different things out there that you can use for it but this is the one main thing that we're going to focus on is just how to use this library search feature so we're going to walk through the steps if you guys want more information on how to do zen arbitrage or flipping of textbooks and or that kind of stuff check out our blog there's a lot of information there this course isn't built to teach you how to do it it's showing you how to use the tool to find these deals so let's take a look at the library search here we've got the library search use bulk categories so if you were using a uh, bulk list of some sort it tells you exactly how to set it up and you can upload that file right here I know we kinda mentioned this in the product search feature so I just wanted to go through and show you guys this one use bulk product codes we'll just click that and show you what that does so if you wanted to look up a list of ISBN or ASIN numbers you can do up to 10,000 of those and you can upload here for that okay so if you have like a college textbook list of just ISBN numbers that you want to run through you can actually set that up in an Excel or CSV file and put that in here and it'll run the search on those items okay so if you just have a few simple ASINs or ISBNs that you want to search you can just quickly paste up to 100 into this one. All you need to have is a comma between them. That's what signifies to tactical arbitrage that, hey, you don't need to go through and this is where to stop. Once you see a comma, stop, move along. Now, we're going to look at the websites. As you can tell, definitely not as many book or not as many sites as on the product search page. I mean, we're looking at four, eight, nine, roughly. So you're going to pick which one you want to do. We'll use Amazon for instance here. And again, over here on the right hand side, you're going to see the kind of links that you're going to want to pull. So we can use this one, Barnes and Noble. We're going to use accounting textbooks today. So we're going to click that link. 
start pages again always start with one unless you want to start somewhere else on the page and we're going to use 10 just to do something quick here and let's go ahead and run it before we get down to any of these variables okay so we're going to run it and you're going to see that it's going to start scanning over here we're running a process so what's going to do is it's going to go pull all of this crap not all this crap but all of the books that are on this page and it's going to start doing a comparison for us okay so if we go to the view data tab you're going to see that it's going to start pulling all this information in okay this is very important to know what it's doing okay it's saying what domain we've pulled it in from the title of the book product image it really likes to show me that image author the kind of binding that we have here publisher year edition number of pages I don't really know why we need to know that but regardless it's there the condition that we have the buy price the Amazon title the Amazon image again ASIN or the ISBN number the buy box condition Amazon buy box price the list price seller if are there is there an FBA seller is there not the return after fees gross profit gross ROI number of sellers weight product size sales rank you see here I can refresh it this shows me right now let me pull one up here and these are old results obviously so what it's gonna show me is it's gonna say hey we have a used book at 2193 now what do we have in the new range here let's actually go to the product information page and look here the buy box used is 2999 you can say that it's 7995 there and we can look through these and you can see that we have the buy price the buy box price when this was ran and I have to rerun these because I just refreshed just one of the prices and it didn't pull the correct one here but it will start comparing that used price to the the buy box price okay I know this sounds slightly confusing but let's get to let me try to back it up and slow it down a second here let me get to some of the newer results so we got Barnes and Noble coming in it's going to compare it to Amazon of course okay so you can see the Amazon buy box price on this guy and they've been switching the buy box of how it sits so let's pull back here okay so we do know right now that this is a slightly off and that's okay we're going to move along with it and we're going to look to see what we have over here so I can buy this for fifty seven dollars and it's currently selling for ninety one new okay there are some opportunities see this is probably used there for resale here okay now this product isn't a great example but that's what it's showing you how to do so let's go back and remember we didn't put any parameters in I'm gonna go ahead and select all I'm gonna delete everything here see if I can get this all to go away as long as my uh, we'll delete the old data let's go ahead and kill my process we'll just restart with the search okay so we're going to pull up Barnes & Noble we're gonna look at the same thing page 1 to page 10 do we want it to include new books well no that's what this one does remove the used row if the used merchant fulfilled or FBA buy box is higher than the Amazon new buy box yeah because odds are if the used buy box is higher than the new no one's gonna buy a used book and nine times out of ten when we're doing this online arbitrage using or the library search here we're only going to be focusing on books that are used you may have a few opportunities to get new ones but it's a lot of flipping with used books so just be aware of that store reductions say we have a 15 percent sale going on at Barnes & Noble right now but I've got to pay seven percent sales tax okay so that's what these boxes do they have discounted gift cards or anything you can put them in there book ranks remove anything's over 1 million is what I'm gonna put in today you can choose your own rank there remember there are millions and millions and millions of books on Amazon so let your rank profile go a lot higher than normal when you're dealing with books 
Um, remove products with blank number of buy box eligible sellers. So let's say we don't want any more than 20. So these next two are remove products with a new buy box price of less than $10. Okay, we know if it's $10, I have to pay shipping to get that book most likely, and I'm just not gonna have an opportunity for this. Same with used. If the buy box price is less than $10, we don't wanna see it. Now your next one here is your publication date. Say let's go 2000 to 2017. I don't wanna see books that are from 1999. I mean, by this point in time, there's probably been a new book. You can adjust these however you want, but that's what that button does. Now we get into the more complicated of the two, okay? Um, these two right here, we'll need to take some time to explain, so let's go past this real quick. We'll come right back to these. Now, we have only calculate the FBA return price if you use buy box prices at least two times the buy price. So if my buy price is six dollars i want that book to be at least a used buy box price of twelve dollars so a lot of people put three in this um, it's really up to you how you want to do it i'm gonna put two just for our video here we don't have any prep costs but if you're using a prep company you could put that price in here it may be 0.50 or it may be 50 cents to uh, ship a book to amazon approximately per pound so i'm going to put that in there it's going to kind of calculate the weight there I want gross profit of at least four dollars needs to have gross profit percentage or ROI of at least 30 percent so we've gone through these on the other pages you guys are seeing the theme here um, keep data if trade-in ROI is at least so you can actually do searches just for trade-in books here it's really kind of fascinating but uh, you can use the Amazon trade-in feature if you want a trade-in percentage of like 20 percent you can take all the other filters away and only set that up and it'll only search for trade-in opportunities using tactical arbitrage. So say I want to be able to buy a book and, and trade it in for like a 30% profit, I can put that in there, put a category on Amazon to help find it and just say go, find me all the trade-ins. And then you have show the Amazon out of stock results as well or only see Amazon out of stock results. So if you only wanted to sell products that Amazon didn't have stock of, you could do this. So let's go back to the two complicated ones here. Now, please try to bear with me because this is going to sound really crazy. Okay, look, Paravita, Paravita bracelets are selling this stuff. This one here, for used books, if the buy box holder is not an FBA seller, so if they're a merchant fulfilled seller, then show a virtual return on investment between the buy box price and blank percent less than the Amazon buy box price. So Chris, what in the world does this mean? I mean, you're looking at it and you're kind of like, uh, me, me, uh, uh. So what it's saying, a virtual ROI is saying we can do some shoddy math here, not shoddy, but we can do some calculated guesses on what the percentage you can get out of a book is compared to the Amazon buy box price and what you could probably charge for the new buy box price or the used buy box price. So let's take an example here that may make absolutely no sense until you hear this. We have a, an accounting textbook. Amazon sells it new in the buy box for $150. Okay. The merchant fulfilled sellers of used sell it for $30. We know that we can charge more than $30 if we use FBA to uh, ship it because you get the benefits of Prime. But we know we can't s price it at what a new one is because it's obviously not new. It's going to be used. So we can estimate that whatever Amazon's price is, we can get about 40% less than that, right? I don't know what your percentage is. You can choose your own percentage there. Let's say I can charge 40% less than the Amazon new buy box price if only merchant filled sellers are selling it. So it's going to start doing that math for us. It's going to say, okay, well, the Amazon buy box price is X. So we'll reduce that by 40%, and that's what we're going to sell this used book at using Prime. And that's what's going to find these opportunities for you that most people never even get to see because that math doesn't usually get done during a search. So we're going to check that box. 
And then this next one here is going to say for new books, if the buy box holder is not Amazon, so Amazon is not the buy box holder for a new book, or an FBA seller. So it's a merchant fulfilled seller only. It's the only person who has a new book in stock. Then show a virtual return on investment between the merchant fulfilled price and the list price of the book. So that little list price that's shown on there. So what it's saying is you there are no Amazon's not a seller. There's no prime sellers. All the only person that's selling this book new is a third party. So if we bought that from them, we could assume we could probably sell it at the list price if it was prime. Now, odds of that selling here neither here nor there. It may or may not happen, but you can start calculating it and it's going to show you the return based upon those. So again, these are the two more complicated of them. If you understand them, you actually open up a lot of um, abilities to run a lot more searches and find more products than the average person that would use this library search. So we have everything filled out, so let's hit submit. It's going to start going. And you guys have seen this over here. It's going to start going do 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 do. It's going to start saying skipped, skipped, skipped. It's going to tell you why it was skipped. It's going to keep going. And maybe it'll find us a product, maybe it won't. Maybe I put too big a restrictions on this. So that's why I always recommend when you first do a search here using the library search, always go broad first. See what in the world gets pulled in as you go through it. And then once you get that, then what you want to do is you want to see how you can start narrowing it down to save you time. So let's look at this one that I just found. Okay, it says, Barnes & Noble currently has it. They are selling it for $140. It's in good condition. Okay. It's saying the Amazon buy box price is $48. And we're looking at it and you're going, well, Chris, this makes no sense. It's saying, you're saying $36 is the return if we list it as... 100 and, uh, 291 what's going on here remember that little box that I told you it was slightly confusing that I clicked I said we calculate the ROI if the buy box for new books has this or give me that re that that math equation that I had you do so it's gonna start pulling these in for you okay it's gonna say hey you told me to give you this so here you go let me look at it now, we look here at this one, and it's got retail accountability. Let's pull up the Barnes & Noble edition, okay? It's saying, hey, yo, you can buy this for $1.99 on our marketplace. Add the bag at $1.99. You can buy it from Mishawaka, Indiana. It could be close to me, okay? It's probably got, it's got shipping included in it. So let's go to Amazon. Say in paperback, who? We're looking at like 26 cents. Big spender, big spender. Notice the Zen arbitrage thing makes me look for a, a prime. There isn't a prime seller on this. Okay? There's no prime sellers with the used edition. We see that we have the non, we have the new edition at 47.59 or 95. So what is this telling me that we could do? What it's saying is, hey Chris, you know where you can buy this at a decent price. You can even buy it here from Amazon at a decent price. You could list this with Prime, purchase this, and the rank of this book isn't great, okay? It's not gonna sell a lot. But when some person, like a student, needs this book immediately, they will be willing to pay the prime price to get it the next two days from now than if they sit around and wait for it. Okay? That's where this math comes in. And it's saying, hey, we think that you can actually sell this based upon that calculation I had you do 40% less than the Amazon buy box price and make... $14 if you bought it from Barnes & Noble and you're able to sell it at 40% less than the buy box price of Amazon. Thus, where this came from, okay? 
We can go down through here and you can see that some things are going to be pulled up, some aren't. You got internal audit. Amazon has a buy box, buy box price here. And it looks like we can make a little bit of money. Let's check it out. Marketplace new or used. It's a hardcover book. Thirty-seven dollars, probably four bucks shipping. It's saying right now Amazon holds the new box here. You can go to used. It's saying we don't have a prime until right here. Seventy-two eighty-one. And that's where it's going to do our calculations from. So it's basing it off on the prime prices because that's what we told it to do. Okay? And like I said, it's in arbitrage. Let's see if I go to FBAMastery.com. So Peter Valley, the one who teaches this kind of stuff, is on FBA Mastery. He has a whole thing about Zen arbitrage. And here's going to be my recommendation. Look through this and understand that the techniques that are talked about here can be done with tactical arbitrage. You don't even have to use the software. You can use tactical arbitrage to do it, okay? I mean, you can go down through here and read all of the different ways you can search for this stuff. Tactical arbitrage will do that for you because it's pulling the same information and you can read textbook money story here. Oh, this is hysterical um, if you have the time, but tactical arbitrage gives you all that ability for no additional cost. You already have this in here and you can start doing this. So you can see here, this last one, it's saying I can get it for good condition, and I'll see the rank, 154,000. And it's saying, hey, yo, let's look here, let's look here. Where did the computer go? So it's saying, in used prices. The first prime is $66, okay? See how it pulls that in? Now, you got to remember, oh, it's got a server error, of course. We looked at this, the new here. Let's look at the new. First prime is $70, but Amazon is out of stock, guys. Don't even know when you're going to get it. If I'm in a class, I need this book yesterday. I can't order that. I'm going to have to go to the use section here. I'm going to have to buy that book because I need the book now. The other ones, I don't know when it's going to come. So I'll be willing to pay more for it. That's at least the idea behind the Zen arbitrage technique. And the whole library search is just simply letting you set the parameters to have you be able to find these items. So the last one I'm going to show you is if we go to FBA Master here. Um, if you guys are watching this right now and you're like, okay, Chris, this sounds cool, but I don't even know where to start. Um, why are you even taking the time to show me this? Um, go to FBA Master and find the XPath and bulk list for tactical arbitrage. Find this little link here. You can search it in the search bar. Um, down at the bottom, you can read through all of this, what a bulk list is. My dad put together something that's called a scholarly book bulk categories list. Now, if you don't know, you can upload this, like I said earlier, into the bulk category section and run this. So what my dad has put together is a bulk list of categories that are not your typical textbooks that everybody else is searching, but are scholarly books that people tend to buy when they're in college or higher education because they need them for class but they're not classified as a textbook so then he has this list you upload it in there set your parameters and it runs for about two to three days and it's just constantly finding these books according to your parameters you're looking for um, you can click through that link at the bottom here um, this one you can go to it. it's like 49 bucks but you can put that in there and just let it run you own the list forever and you can just keep this going. So if you are somebody who uses the product search feature of Tactical Arbitrage, but not really the Amazon Flips or the library search, what you're missing out on is two thirds of the entire capability of Tactical Arbitrage, not to mention the reverse search section. 
So what you want to do is put the software to use, let it run while you're not even up so you can start using it to help you find deals and explore new areas that you're not used to arbitrage with. So again, I'm going to do a video just walking through the reverse search, answering some basic questions. I'm going to talk about XPath and bulk list because I've gotten a lot of questions about that kind of stuff. But I want to thank you guys for being part of this course. And I apologize again for being a little late with these videos. Um, but I hope you understand and I hope you've had a little bit of fun. And I know this is a lot of information. This is a really powerful tool. And what happens is people get scared. And I hope that you at least have the I have been armed with at least a little bit of knowledge that makes you go, maybe this isn't that bad. Maybe I can really use this. Maybe I don't need to be a techie to do it. I know when I've gone through, I've learned some things from just teaching you guys. So I'm going to tell you, just keep watching these videos keep reading stuff and keep pushing forward and finding new and unique ways to kind of take this software to the next level. So again, this is Chris here with FBA Master. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I will talk with you guys all soon. Cheers.